students welcome back to the class today's topic the properties of metalloids and the noble gases and one more topic uses of some common metals so today i will give some of the information or the knowledge regarding these two topic so the first one metalloid i hope all of you know what is mean by metalloid so it is a very new words it's a new word metalloid so the metalloid means some of the elements having two characters two characters means maybe uh, metal or non metal half of the metal character and half of the non metal character is called metalloid what is mean by metalloid is a intermediate properties it uh, of uh, metal and non metals that is called metalloid okay so and some of the non metals uh, metalloids are arsenic boron germanium silicon these are the metalloid character this type of elements show in the half of the metal character and half of non metal character so what is the example of the metalloids arsenic boron and silicon and germanium these are the metalloids okay and next one properties of noble gas properties of noble gas what is mean by noble gas or inert gas so this means the noble gas means they cannot react with any other elements it is a free or stable form ordinarily this type of elements they never go to react with any other elements into form a compounds that's why this elements are called noble gas or inert gas what is the name of the elements or noble gases helium neon radon and krypton these elements are called noble gases so this type of elements they can't react with any other elements into form a compound that's why it's a inert gases okay and next one very important topic the uses of common metals so in this chapter we are only discussing about the properties of metal and non metals so first one some uses of common metals so first one copper copper iron and uh, silver gold these are the metals no so these metals we are using every day in our life in a different ways so today i will give you some of the information some of the uh, points functions about this type of metals the first one metals all over the world almost more uh, percentage of um, copper is using in some different ways for example making the electrical transmission wires the major portion of copper is used in electrical works or electrical appliances so here it is so the copper what's the chemical formula that gets a symbol of the copper cu okay so it is used by electrical industries in electrical industries the copper is a very important element means the one of the important metal you know for what is the purpose of this so it is a very good conductor of electricity that's why electrical industries the copper is a very important metal so that's why so it is uh, using for industry um, electrical industries for making electrical transmission wires electrical transmission wires for making the wires this type of wires copper wires easy to carry the electricity one place to another place that's why this copper is very valuable uh, metal for all the industry all the uh, electrical industry next one making the coils coils of electrical machines in all electrical uh, machines so the copper wire is used for different uh, function different works different function and next one the copper is used in making utensils and coins and jewelry for making the jewelry copper is also one of the most important part as for making the utensils coins and jewelry okay next one it is used for making pipes for plumbing 
Some copper pipe is also available for, it is also used for our household and some other purpose for plumbing. Means for, for making the pipe, that is helpful to for plumbing works. Next one, iron, secondary metal iron. What is the chemical formula of iron? Fe. So this iron is a different, it is the cheapest metal in the earth coast, iron. So this iron is also different type of ions according to their carbon content according to their carbon content so here there are three type of iron the first one wrought iron wrought iron second one pig iron or cast iron and third one steel third one steel these three are iron but according to the carbon content these three are classified into three different uh, purpose the first one Rot iron, rot iron. So we want to understand what is the percentage of rot iron in the, what is the percentage of carbon in the rot iron. There are less than one percentage carbon content in rot iron. What is the percentage? Less than 0 0.1 percentage carbon present in rot iron. That's why this is a very soft and ductile. Sorry, ductile, soft and ductile. So that's why this uh, rot iron is using for roofing and the grills and the electromagnet. For the, uh, this uh, rot iron is used for electromagnet and so um, grills and the roofing of roofing of house. This type of uh, iron only using this type of functions works. Next one, pick iron or cast iron. So it contains 2 to 4 percentage carbon. What is the percentage of uh, cast iron? 2 to 4 percentage. So what is the function of this cast iron? So it is only using for drain pipes. Drain pipes and the parts of uh, machinery, immortal machinery. Some of the parts of machinery are also used for cast iron. And next one, steel. Steel. The steel contains the carbon up to 2 percentage. What is the content of carbon in the steel? Up to 2 percentage. So, this uh, steel is using in uh, a different ways, uh, different uh, things. For example, uh, it is mainly using that is rails, rails and the bridges and part of the machine, some part of the machines and the building ships almost all the objects almost all the things made by the steel okay so i hope all of you understood this topic iron classified into three categories according to the carbon content the first one wrought iron having less than 0.1 percentage carbon second one cast iron it having two to four percent carbon content and third one steel the steel having the carbon content up to two percentage and the next metal, aluminium. Symbol of aluminium, A, A. Okay. So about the aluminium and what is the uses of aluminium. So here, aluminium is a silvery white metal. Silvery white metal. So it is a malleable element and the ductile element uh, metal also. So light and strong. So the aluminum is a light and a very strong. Mm, okay. It is also conducting the electricity and the heat. It is a good conductor of electricity and heat. And next one, it is used, in, used for cooking utensils and the food packaging, oil and the furniture, door and the windows. It's mainly used in our daily life. It is a, uh, for manufacturing of food uh, foils, food uh, covering. Packing foils and the doors and the windows and the, um, cooking utensils. And next one, it also using the electrical transmission lines. So the aluminium is always using the electrical transmission lines for power distribution. Power distribution means the electrical or electricity transmitting means electron transmitting one place to another place. It is a good carrier of this electricity. That's why the aluminum is also good transmission material. 
the easy to conduct at city one place to another place. Next one, making the bodies of aircraft. Aluminium always using the bodies of aircraft and automobiles and machinery machine parts. Some of the machine parts are also prepared by aluminium. And next one, good. It is also good reflector. Which one? Aluminium is a good reflector. That's why that is used for making concave mirrors. Concave mirrors for or uh, astronomical telescope. Okay. So these are the main functions of and uses of aluminium. Next metal, zinc. Set it in. So some of the uses of zinc they are. The first one about that zinc. What is the color? The zinc is a bluish white metal. Bluish white metal, and it is very easy to brittle. That means the brittling nature. What is mean by brittle nature? Easy to break in the simple forms. Means simple pieces. So the first one, it is used to galvanize. Which one? Zinc is used to galvanize the iron. She is to prevent the corrosion. To prevent the corrosion. For example, for example, the zinc is coating over the iron. So what happened? That the iron become free from the corrosion. That's why the zinc is always galvanized to prevent the corrosion of iron. And next one, it is used to make alloys. Which one the zinc is always used to make alloys. Which type of alloys? Such as brass and germanium. So German silver. German silver and brass which uh, um, metal is used for alloy making alloy. So the zinc is, uh, zinc is used for making the alloy brass and uh, German silver. And next one. Negative electrode of tricent. The zinc always acts as a negative electrode. Negative electrode of tricent. Negative side. And next one, it is used for extraction of gold and silver. Highly reactive metal. Which one? That the zinc is a highly reactive metal. That's why it is used for extraction of gold and silver. Okay. These are the main uh, functions or main uses of zinc. Next metal, lead. Lead actually soft metal. Very soft metal. And it's a silvery white or greyish metal. Okay. Silvery white metal or greyish metal. So it is also ductile and malleable character. Also. Ductile and malleable character. And the pure conductor of electricity. That is a pure conductor of electricity. That means they cannot pass the electricity. And it is a toxic metal. Lead is a toxic metal. So, now we are going to learn their important uses of lead. The first one, it is a good absorber of radioactive radiation. Lead is a <coughs> good absorber, absorber of radioactive radiation. So, that's why uh, lead is very useful for the human beings. It is a absorb the radioactive radiation. And next one. It is used as lining for zinc pipes, lining of zinc pipes and other sanitary fittings because it does not react with impure water. The lead cannot react with impure water and mild acid and alkali. That's why the lead is used as a lining for zinc pipes, lining for zinc pipes and other sanitary fittings. Okay, so it cannot react with the impure, impure water and uh, acid and alkali. Mild acid and alkali. Okay. Next one, it is used in the car batteries. So, lead is used in the car batteries. So, I hope all of you know uh, what is a car battery. So, in car battery, the lead is also main content. It is very useful for the human life. And it is a covering underground electric and telephone cables. Which one? Lead is also help to covering the underground electric and telephone cables to protect them from the corrosion. To protect them from the corrosion. Okay. 
And next one, protecting shield of X-ray. Protecting shield of X-ray and harmful radiations. Next one, magnesium. Next element, magnesium. Okay, uh, yeah, magnesium. So the magnesium also is a familiar one. So for example, we are using fire crackers, fire crackers. So the magnesium also uh, acts as an agent for producing the dazzling white flames. Which type of flames produce in this one? Dazzling white flames. So that's why not the fire works. Uh, the magnesium, magnesium is the main content. So that's very important for us. Next one, the magnesium is used for making aircraft. Magnesium also used for making the aircraft parts and then some of the machinery parts and then household appliances. Household appliances also magnesium is are useful for human beings. And next one it is usually in the extraction of uranium and titanium from their salt. Which one? The magnesium is used for the extraction of uranium and titanium for for from their salt. Okay. This is also good extractor. So these are, these are the basic uh, uh, uses of metals. So I will, uh, I hope all of you know what is the use of these metals in our life. So all of you learn these uh, uses and uh, some more elements, some more metals also useful uh, for us. I will teach you in the next section. Okay. Thank you.